Hi, welcome to TheaterCast, presented by the EdReach Network, giving educators a voice, a big voice. You've reached episode number 36, being recorded November 10th, 2013. This show is, this is the show where theater teachers and professionals share a passion for theater trends, practical advice, and tips, and ask questions of theater, some of theater's most innovative collaborators. And we, uh, joining me, as always, is my partner in crime, Danielle Phyllis. Good even tide, all. And um, we've uh, kind of titled this uh, the th or triple threat, three <laughs> GCTOs, and we have um, a great um, theater teacher and uh, um, education technology uh, expert, uh, Sean J. O'Neill, who okay. is joining us from... Can you tell us this uh, worldly place that you are joining us but, from, Sean? I'm week? in the back. I'm in the back of my limo in uh, <laughs> let's see, Times Square. No, um, so I'm I'm in my car outside of McDonald's uh, near the soccer field where my son has just finished <laughs> three games of the All Star. I don't know what they call it, All Star Gala or event. So uh, it ran long and. I decided to hang out and get some free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile emergency Shakespeare. Exactly. Unit. <laughs> and a dollar for a large drink. You can't beat that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you can't beat that. Um, all three of us are Google certified teachers, and um, that's where we get the GCTO. And uh, Sean, actually, I think within the past week, also become, became a Google certified trainer. We're just going to go with that because eventually they'll have their new name. Right. That's what we're going to call it for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got in right before they changed all the certification stuff. So uh, that was uh, that's for Google Apps, and um, it's something everybody should do. Actually, it's a great way to learn about all of the Google tools. Yeah, and uh, you can go uh, learn about that at google.com/edu. And they have the modules, so even if you um, don't become a certified trainer or qualified individual, you can uh, figure out ways to make Google work for you <laughs> uh, in the classroom. And that's something we all enjoy uh, and enjoy doing. Uh, I know I've do I've just did trainings within my school eight hours of it this past Friday on a professional development day. And I'll be doing one on Monday for another school district. Uh, so, and I'm sure both of you have been doing a lot of training. Um, something fun that happened just this week, I think. Um, Google has a new thing called Google Helpouts, okay. and both uh, Danielle and Sean have uh, started doing helpouts for people and uh, talking about either the Bard or auditioning or helping with Google Apps. And uh, Sean, I think on the first day, was lucky enough to uh, get national coverage. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, hey, the, you used the perfect word. I was lucky. <laughs> um, the, essentially, the way that the Hangouts are set up is you can schedule times to be open and have people schedule appointments with you, or you can just click in a, a button that says, I'm available, and then wait for somebody to kind of click in. And uh, I've been doing a lot of that because it was the first day, and you get a lot of hang-ups, people checking out the service, but um, about, I don't know, sometime in my third hour of just leaving it on while I was at the computer, um, somebody clicks on, and she says, hey, I'm from the Wall Street Journal doing an article. She said doing an article, I think. Uh, do you mind if I record it? Well, that's the nature of help outs is that the other person can record it. So I said, oh, sure. sure, you know, you can record it. And then, I don't know, two, three hours later, she sends me this link, and I'm the, the subject of the article in, or the video article on Wall Street Journal Live. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, look at that. That was so cool that I just clicked on there. And I uh, had and realized the interesting fact you had shared with her, and it totally makes sense, and maybe in the back of my head, but... Um, <laughs> That's that's the feedback I keep getting. Actually, <laughs> everybody says I never knew that about the Lion King. And I'm like, well, she asked me like, what's something nobody knows about Hamlet? And 
uh, okay, it's the Lion King. It is. I mean, and everybody's like, oh my god, of course it is. Come to my help out. I've got more <laughs> random useless facts of information I can share. Like, you know? <laughs> so it's part, it's part help for actors and directors and part help for awkward cocktail party conversation. <laughs> so you can... It's everything. I you should re remarket it. Well, and the best the best thing about that Wall Street Journal piece is that the the guy that intros it he keeps saying over and over again anybody could uh, hold the help out. So this guy that we're going to show you he's not really that qualified, but you know, like, just watch the section with me in it. It looks great. <laughs> so tell where some of your help outs have come and what kinds of things you have um, helped out with, if you will. Um, well, I'll tell you the three, so I'll tell you the three quality ones first, and then, then I'll tell you that I had a creepy one, too. <laughs> oh, no, I've heard yeah. about them. Yeah, they're, they're fun, too, though, you know. Um, <laughs> no, so I had, the first actual one was a, a young man in the back seat of his mother's car, he's a senior in, in high school, and he just wanted to talk about the first two acts of Macbeth. He said, I, here's what I think happened, but I'm confused, and I'm not sure, and and so I had him kind of talk through what he thought happened, which was actually right on. And uh, I sent him a link to um, to uh, Play Shakespeare's uh, summary, so playshakespeare.com, which is a great resource for anybody mm -hmm. who's looking up uh, Shakespeare stuff. And uh, so I sent him a link to the Macbeth's summary so that he could kind of read ahead for Act 3. And, uh, and it was that was a brief one. It was about five minutes, and, and he seemed to get what he needed out of it, and, and it was fun for me. And and unique. Um, and then the second one was a, a university student from Kazakhstan. That was really cool. Um, and she was an art major who had to write a Shakespeare paper and, and wanted, we worked towards uh, a couple of talking points for her paper. Um, that was fun. Uh, the language is a little bit interesting, the language barrier though, because you do get, you know, I'm sure I have a really thick Californian surfer accent, and she had a really thick Kazakhstan accent. So was, that was the biggest um, kind of hurdle in that conversation. Um, and then the most recent one was a young man who was doing, um, oh, what was he doing? Shoot, I can't remember. Oh, A Christmas Story. And he, he was the kid that dares, the, dares him, double dog dares him or whatever, and he was trying to work on his evil laugh. And so we were we worked That's on his awesome. evil laugh. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it's so and it was cool. And he's he may call back next time he's got a show in December and he's like, Yeah, I'll, I'll you can help me out with this other one. So, you know, like I was talking with Danielle a little bit, uh, I don't know that I'll be able to switch to any kind of paid model, um, because the clientele for Shakespeare education help, they're not gonna have a lot of money anyway. Um, so uh, but that's it's a learning experience and I'm I've certainly helped out some people. Uh, and it's been fun for me too. It's amazing how much talent and this it gives you a big picture of how much is out there in the world. How much talent, ambition, passion. I really, I really enjoyed the experience so far. But I would like to hear about the creepy one. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just because the, there's a were, lot of that in the world too. <laughs> to be it, there were a couple. One was like this. It was weird. It was it was like a call center, but they were all. Um, they were all like Amish, like they all had the full braids and <laughs> and hats. It was almost though as though like somebody Hasidic? had yeah, okay. and yeah. and he was having technical issues and just wanted to know about help outs, um, mm. but was on the phone asking me to wait while he was talking on the phone to somebody and there was somebody in the background. So that lasted a few <laughs> minutes before I politely said, you know what, schedule when you can talk to me and we'll deal. Um, and, th and then I had the one guy who was who was in the dark. It was like his silhouette, and and you could all like his head was like you know see if I can do it. It was like here, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> he was and, and he was like so, so where are you? Um, uh, I'm in California, you know that that kind of thing. Any questions? And I asked him about three times. If, is there something specific to Shakespeare I can help can you with? Talk about and, Shakespeare. Exactly right. And, uh, <laughs> can you so show that's... me both your hands? Maybe <laughs> I'm a little weirded out. Yeah, that's creepy. That's yeah. super creepy. Yeah. And you haven't had that happen yet, huh? I haven't. I have had no murder van calls yet. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I had. Uh, I'm just imagining your like creepy dude. Is it? It's got like people trapped in the back. 
<laughs> he's taunting them with freedom. Put it a call. But um, <laughs> no, I had a very nice, very talented young woman from Texas who was going to a big um, uh, casting call for the eight film agents in her area, and she had a little script that she wasn't in love with um, that she needed to get ready and. Um, I told her to, to pretend she's secretly evil, <laughs> um, and she 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 was great. I mean, really, I think all she needed was was um, the permission to play. Which, uh, Sean, as you probably agree, and Nick, that's usually mm -hmm. the biggest thing to just go have fun and play, whether it's Shakespeare or anything else. Uh, and then another, also very talented and just darling young man from Guadalajara, um, who was uh, said he's not great at auditioning, doesn't enjoy it, feels like he always picks the wrong monologues and just kind of wanted to talk about how to better prepare and maybe get um, something I always, I was trying to push him toward that I've pushed my students toward is getting a monologue sort of portfolio together mm -hmm. so that you have something for every occasion and to just keep adding to it. So we talked about plays he liked. I fell instantly in love with him because he said in the same breath, Marat Saad, Pillow Man and Midsummer Night's Dream. I was like, you, my friend, are my kind of people. I like you. We can work with this. Nice. So he was darling, and then a former student of mine found me. So that was neat, too. And then I just had weird people sign up for multiple slots. They all had bizarre, obvious pseudonyms with strange pictures on them, and then they just didn't show up. So. Yeah. There's a um, lot of that. That'll go away, I think, as it gets to be just another Google thing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it's so fun. I really dig it. I've actually got two lined up for tonight right after our show. Nice. Um, hopefully they'll show. <laughs> Maybe it'll be Man Guy. I'll be like, I heard about you. Right. <laughs> if you see him, take a screenshot, because I should have gotten a screenshot. And I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> and like I heard about that call center thing. You weren't the only one that happened to. A couple of people on Help Out said the same thing happened to them. I, yeah. It's got to be some, like the competition is trying to figure out how it works or something. I don't know. These are. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's going to be neat to see what, what it does and how they sustain it and who makes money and who doesn't. and you know, Just like any new tool. And we'll pop up the links to, to Sean's... Um, help out channel site link event listing. I don't know what we call it really yet. Listing, I guess. Help out yeah. page. Yeah. <laughs> and mine too. We'll come yes, yours there. too. So I'm you amazing. guys in, listening in vans now can <laughs> <laughs> get a little time to freak us out if you want. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Sorry. <laughs> but that's not all you do. You, um, yeah. You're part of Shakespeare cast. Too, right? Can you tell us about that, Sean? <laughs> so that that's a <laughs> that's actually proof that I was brilliant before my time, um, because it, uh, we haven't put out an episode in at least three years, and I started it in 2005 when mm. when podcasts hit iTunes for the first time, and it was just like it was Adam Curry and uh, Scott Sigler doing his his book, and a couple other people, and I, I remember distinctly, I was out of town, I think we were at Disneyland or something, and I'm in the hotel, and, and it hit, and I'm like, oh my god, wait a minute, that, what a great idea to, to regularly, like, I gotta grab some kids, and we're gonna perform Shakespeare, um, and regularly record, and we'll do one episode a week, which you guys know is just a nightmare anyway, um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and I had all these grand plans for it, which sort of came true, like we wound up with, oh, nice, beautiful. Um, uh, in fact, you can see, look, January 31st, 2010 was the last episode, so we're coming up to uh, four years. It just makes me feel guilty. Um, but, sorry, uh, sorry, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> right, no, 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 <laughs> it's beautiful. Hey, notice how Shakespeare kind of looks like me? Do you see that? That's the, Wait, let me take my... Well, no, I, I never know. noticed that before. Yeah, that my student, my one of my students drew that, and she, I didn't ask her, I said, I need a cartoon image of Shakespeare with some headphones, and she said, okay, so I took Shakespeare, and I took you, and I drew this picture, um, and I love it, um, and you can see the student's name, so those are all students performing, and um, we recorded oh, uh, Romeo and Juliet, and we recorded Twelfth Night, 
only about halfway through recording, um, we uh, like we switched cast and things like that. So the things that I have left aren't as good as the things that are already published. So I kind of have oh. this stuff that I should just really sit down, edit, and put out. Um, but uh, it, you know, it just takes time. And and honestly, though, when it was rolling, it was rolling. We got picked up by um, it was Pod Show, so it was Adam Curry's. Um, podcast company and then turned to Mevio um, and so we had sponsors we had GoDaddy was paying us and uh, Petco and and a couple other sponsors that um, you know basically you use the code and you get a kickback when they, whenever they use the code so uh, we made enough money to buy a uh, like a recording component that hooks up to your laptop so it's about three grand total um, over the course of about the two and a half years we were really active um, but it, it, you know, I couldn't teach anything else. We were we became this like production company for an audio show that, that you know, enough people listened to that it, we were seeing this business model happen. But it really just became like our life. And mm -hmm. uh, since then, it just it hasn't. If I if I, I always get this urge to focus on that again and to start putting those out again, especially now that um, you know, well, here we are talking about it. And then I just talked about it to the The Journal in May. Um, all the time wishing that I had had the idea two years ago instead of, what, eight years ago now. Um, so it's it's there, and that's my email, seanj at shakespearecast.com, and I'm the only one with the shakespearecast.com email, unless you guys want one, I could set you up for free. <laughs> um, although it's really long, and you have to spell it for everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, I, it's, it's one of those things that I'll, I hopefully can get back to and would love to just have a class of students working on Shakespeare plays, recording them, sending them out regularly, because um, it really is a good, um, it's a good performance venue, and it's also a good tool for people to use when they, you know, if they're learning language, it's really where we got our best audiences, people in other countries learning the English language through what these kids were doing. Um, so it's really, really cool. And I miss it. Oh, I know. Well, maybe now that you're a big bad GCT, maybe yeah. um, maybe there'll be <laughs> people coming out of the woodwork to, and maybe it could be more of a networked, um, uh, well, collaborative. Yeah that's, yeah, that's one of those things that I I think about. I know you know Nick is doing some amazing work um, with the the worldwide theater. What's the rest of it? Worldwide World theater. theater video project. See, yeah. So I was watching that, and and so uh, in the back of my mind, there's like, all right, if I can. If I can muster up the energy and the time, I, I you know, know I can grab you guys and we can charge through this wall of, of you know, I don't know, dread that, that's keeping me from <laughs> jumping back into it. Well, it's true. I mean, it seems like folks, especially theater folks, uh, have so many interests and so many uh, fingers and so many pies that yeah. Yeah. it gets overwhelming. There's a, it's, there's a, um, a burden for being a passionate person sometimes and it's that you have to say no to some of the things you dearly love. Right. It's <laughs> totally true. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's a really cool idea. Maybe somebody listening to this podcast will get really excited about that and contact you. Maybe even somebody who's on this podcast right now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of um, podcasts and being supported. This EdReach podcast is supported by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 150,000 downloadable titles, including some great education choices for theater teachers like John Lithgow's drama and actors' education. And for our listeners, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give a chance to try out their service. One audiobook to consider is this John Lithgow one, which I've been able to listen to, and uh, it's really great because he's such a performer that covers all the modes. You know, he's mastered TV and film and stage and even children's books and children's music. The man does not stop. But if you want to get one of those free audiobooks, you can go to audiblepodcast.com backslash edreach. So that's audiblepodcast.com dot com slash edreach. So it does offer I do love the audio format because it allows me, especially being so mobile, to expand my mind, learn about different things. And I think it's also great what Sean was able to do at the ver <laughs> at the birth of podcasting. <laughs> and um 
it does offer some really exciting adventures for our students, teachers, because there's always that drive to work or ride to work if you're lucky enough to have that great mass transit. I don't in my town, but... <laughs> Was it, um, yeah, Sean Jay, you're so OG. <clears throat> or OPC, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, you t it's funny. I mean, uh, not to pump Audible more than we need to, but uh, I've been a subscriber forever. I have a two-hour commute both ways, like mm -hmm. each way. Oh, so. wow. Uh, yeah, I'm plowing through audiobooks and uh, um, uh, podcasts as well. So uh, it's uh, without that, I would be, I don't know, I guess I'd be one of those people they play all those radio ads for. <laughs> or a really angry, honking mess of a stressed out, yeah. now it's your and time to learn. And, yeah, and, <laughs> and since you're in California, you have that extra traffic, <laughs> I think, right. at times. L.A. Tra or I don't know if you're yeah I'm northern remember, northern so we're mellow but there we're all there that's for sure <laughs> and there's a lot of traffic yeah. up there six eighty yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, when you are teaching Shakespeare do you find yourself saying I know when I am I find myself saying the same couple of things all, all the time to help my students sort of unpack it could. Would you mind sharing some of that? Well, the so the one kind of mantra, and I'm not going to remember what book it's from. Maybe you guys will, but it's the it's the why are why are you using this word now, mm. right? Um, there's a reason for every single word there, and as a character, you're the one who's choosing the words, so you have to decide why that one. Um, that that's a big one. The other thing that I do it that's really early in the process is I talk about how Shakespeare's actually, it's my thesis is that Shakespeare's easier to do than most theater because it's so well written. Mm -hmm. um, if you hit your consonants, you're going to know how the character feels. Oh, I'm spitting, so I must be angry, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm chewing, you know, I have L's, M's, and N's, so I'm probably in love, you know. It, it's just really... Um, the only barrier is language, and if you take the time to look those words up, then you remove that barrier, and uh, then you get to play with all those cool tools he throws at you. Um, so those are kind of my two, the two things. One is that it's it's much easier than people think that it is uh, because it's so good. I, haven't you guys? I'm sure have worked with a terrible script before. And it's just really hard to act. I've even you know? written some terrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you better than that. Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. You're right. You're so right. And and I I always think I always marvel that he must have been some sort of freak alien because <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> I mean, because he's teaching you how to act. Right. With the lines he's teaching you uh, when the when the when the iambic pentameter breaks up well you're lying or you're panicking or in lady m's case you're you're losing your grasp on reality and uh, i just love it i just love it so much and and i love unlocking that with students is there a i get to teach romeo and juliet with my eighth graders and one of my favorite times is when they start, they come in, I always ask them what they think, what they know, think they know about Romeo. And they're always, oh, he's romantic, and, <laughs> and he's like the best, you know, he's the most romantic hero ever. And then they're always blown away when he comes in and he ain't in love with Julia, and he's kind of a sappy, emo, whiny, comedic character in the beginning. Yeah. So I love those those misconceptions are, are there some favorites of yours or some lines that people constantly misread that drive you crazy oh that's a good question um, geez I it, it I do like the fact that they know more than they think they do um, you know because they are exposed to the stories in mm -hmm. other media um, they just don't know that it's Romeo and Juliet yeah. or Hamlet or Hamlet. even Julius <laughs> Caesar right yeah um, so uh, having them just that light go on. Hey, here's a quick way to get you into Hamlet. It's the Lion King. Boom. You know, and everybody goes, "Oh, now I know what it's about." Only now kill everybody at the end, and you got Shakespeare's version. You know, it's so <laughs> that, that part of it I really enjoy. Um, I can't think of something that 
like a misconception. Um, well, my favorite is always where for art thou now, Romeo. Oh right. Uh, Jane yeah, asking for, where is he? He's right there. Yeah, he's not. She's not asking that. But uh, that one, like, get thee to a nunnery, is always fun to talk about. Yeah. Um, uh, the whole they, to be or not to be speech is an interesting one too. Right. To well, because they've been told that well he's suicidal. Okay. Well, let's is he? You know, is that what that's about? Does he know they're there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> what um, if he does? The uh, well, and two, you know, is he talking to the audience? Mm -hmm. It's that whole piece. And what is he? If you're talking to the audience, what do you want from the audience? So then, that going down that path too changes what he's talking about, maybe. Um, but uh, people thinking that it's it's boring or that that not much happens or you know, when really you've got just as Bloody and gore. anything that's on TV today is, you know, was in Shakespeare pretty much. Um, although I'd be hard pressed to find a zombie, I think. Um, well, so you head. could probably make a case for that in say Macbeth. Yeah, yeah, or you're right. Yeah, <laughs> no, good call. Zombie Macbeth. There we go. Yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> mm. I, I feel a production coming on. <laughs> the podcast, the Shakespeare cast, is reborn. Reborn. And then not <laughs> The, uh, <laughs> oh, the walking deathish or death, the, walk, <laughs> the walking McDeath. The wa there you go, right? Yeah, so right. McDeath is a whole different thing here because I'm in front of McDonald's. So. Oh my god, it's so meta. <laughs> wait, wait, that's a sponsor. Here we go. We got sponsorship. We got a topic. We got a new take on it. We are set. <laughs> So, Sean, do you find yourself, you you talk about PlayShakespeare.com, uh, do you find yourself referring to or, or utilizing any other uh, tools, uh, tech tools? Um, with regards to Shakespeare, uh, I haven't lately because I haven't actually, um, I haven't taught at the high school level um, theater for over a year now. I've switched to graphic and media design. Um, now at the college level I do, but I'm not teaching Shakespeare for more than like two weeks in a, the course of a theater appreciation class. Um, so I'm kind of jonesing for some Shakespeare actually. But um, the uh, there were some really good apps early on, some some good iPad apps, and you guys might even know them better than I do. But you were able to uh, download the shows. You you so you had the free app. But then you could download the individual shows, and it would even give you acting partners almost. Ooh. Like it would oh, yeah. read the other character. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I don't, I don't, I th I, I don't own Apple products, so <laughs> yeah, <me laughs> some of the stuff I miss out on. But I do know, because it's public domain, that those Shakespeare's working with those lines, and I'm trying to think... I yeah, saw that uh, at inter the International Thespian Festival like three or four years ago. But um, its name's not coming to me at the moment. Let's see what else is on my phone. I think it's just that Play Shakespeare app for because it's the best kind of text reference. Um, I'm looking on my phone right now, but me too. <laughs> well, I'm not looking on your phone. That <laughs> That's a little creepy. That would be creepy. Right? <laughs> yeah. The, you're that guy from the van. I was going to say, yeah. I can see too much of your face. It's not that creepy. <laughs> yeah, that's the only one I've got um, on here right now. I found... Have you, guys, have you guys heard of this social Shakespeare thing? Oh, that brand new yet? one. Yeah, that no. was in the New York Times. Tell me more, tell me more. Oh, was it? I thought I found it. Darn it. So I'm gonna All screen right. share it with you. I don't, I don't really get it yet, but um, I've been tooling around their site, and I think it's so cool. So it's this company. There we go. You guys seen that? Oh, nice. So it's this company that does. Um, they call it Social Shakespeare, and uh, they, it's like m multiple places, multiple um, cities and participants, and they sort of live as the Shakespearean characters on social media for a certain amount of time, I want to say. And, of course, now my Wi-Fi is crapping out. Okay. Um, but it's really cool. Uh, I was just kind of sniffing around the um, sniffing around their site, and uh, 
and checking them out. They had one about much ado about nothing was the one that was up. And now of course I'm super slow. I always want to blame my, my husband down there. Yeah, so it's a digital performance. Here it is, back in May of this year. Um, and they put it into your social network and it kind of unfold it in real time nice. over the days as, as far as uh, the play goes. So it's not, you know, you don't go see the show in a space with an audience sitting around you. You just tune into your social network and see the action of the play unfold sort of in real time as it goes on. Isn't that nifty? What a cool idea. Yeah, that's pretty so, cool. Somebody did a Twitter the, a couple of years ago. I think it might have been Romeo and Juliet where they were doing that, had all the characters set up and, and did that thing over, over a weekend. Um, and anything like that is just a, what a cool way to expose, A, expose new people, um, and B, explore the play in a different way, you know? Um, yeah, I yeah, find that exactly. And go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, you know, when you if you cross cast something you've never cross cast before, all of a sudden it gives you insight into that character um, that you didn't have before because you've got another gender's perspective. Um, so it's that same kind of thing with these social tools. It, it, you you put them in a different arena, and it's it, it puts the spotlight kind of on these different pieces that you would never would have seen before. Yeah, in a in a different way, just kind of recontextualize it, and um, it, certainly, I'm sure they discovered some things about the the script and the interactions that are different than than we would now. I just thought that was so nifty, it's such fun. We'll put that we put that link up in the in the show notes too for folks. Why Very not? cool. I'm gonna check that out. <laughs> And I found something else, too, that I thought I'd share with you guys, if you don't mind. Um, I've been nerding out on Shakespeare lately, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had an audition just recently at, uh, for, at a local theater for uh, Much Ado, so I've been, you know, how when an audition comes up, you get all jazzed about it. <laughs> Heck, yeah. Especially that show, yeah, that's so, a fun one. Yeah, it's a messed up show. I can't believe they don't count that as a, one of his problem plays. Yeah. It's so messed up. If I was hero, I'd be like, what? No. <laughs> Mm-mm. No. Uh, no, because so you, guys... you... Well, you couldn't because you'd be in a corset. That's the only excuse for fainting. <laughs> like, that's... There's no way that you could be your normal self because you're so cinched up in your wedding dress. That's right. And I would imagine there was a lot of passing of gas, too, that doesn't get mentioned. <laughs> And the, I don't know, uh, ladies out there who actresses who've had to wear those, please back me up on this. Uh, but have you guys seen this? The BBC's um, Shakespeare's Restless World. It's kind of a cool, um, really rich site too. Um, that has all kinds of things: music um, from from the time period, different clips, um, different sound effects uh, from from the time as well. Nice. Really fun stuff for nerds. <laughs> no, that's very cool. Yeah. And I'll this see. Is turning into a like five hour event for me because after we're done, I'm gonna go play around for three hours. My wife's gonna be like, "How come you were at McDonald's for five hours today?" <laughs> um, I've got uh, kind of a cool one that um, our students can be uh, a part of, and I just have to switch to screen share. Um, so the New York Times, uh, about two weeks ago, talked about um, they are seeking students' short Hamlet videos. Brevity is the wit of the soul, uh, declares Polonius and William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Perhaps short, uh, and perhaps short videos of lines from one of the Bard's most famous love plays. And I guess, you know, I, I can feel good that both the New York Times and myself started with Hamlet for to do our video projects. <laughs> um, and they've a asked uh, invite student actors and actresses submit their performances of lines from Hamlet using Instagram. So they're limited to 15 seconds and because um, that's how long Instagram videos are. But if you're a high school or college student who uses Instagram, record a short video of your performance of lines from Hamlet and then fill out the form and submit 
the video and use the hashtag Maximum Shakespeare on your Instagram post. And deadlines December 1st. And the best ones will be featured uh, on the New York Times.com later in December. And so that's just kind of a really cool thing. Um, well, you could totally steal that project as a, as a teacher. Yes. You know, that's a, what a great way to do something quickly, even just for a scene or, you know, you figure you're studying one play a year maybe in your English class. Um, to, to take that and do that for a week or whatever, that's what a great idea. Yeah, in fact, you could steal all of that and make your, make your students uh, tweet as a character for, for a while, too. That would be kind of fun, too. <laughs> Shakespeare oh, yeah, did it. Stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of an interesting, fun thing or to have them uh, maybe like, um, oh, like use today's meat mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. class time and... You know, okay, we're tweeting uh, or using today's meet like um, like they're tweeting, and we're in Act One in Romeo and Juliet, so it's all that lovey-dovey. And then you know, you get to Act Five, and everything's falling apart. <laughs> and it's like Romeo, where are you? Are you are you dead? <laughs> or, and then you, and then you, that'd be kind of fun. Maybe a little bit funny, maybe it's a little bit dark, but you know, the the tweeting of the ending with all the waking up and going, oh. And, uh. Right, yeah. <laughs> this cell phone is my only source of light in this tomb. <laughs> Too bad I didn't oh, have service dude. when I was trying to call her, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the most uh, uh, upsetting uh, moments when you come to realize it was just that one stupid little note. That that's my favorite moment of the the Boz Lerman movie was the that he named the delivery service post haste like yes. that, that's pure genius. I'll pay ten bucks to see that anytime. Yeah, I love some of what he did with that. I yeah, have to say, that's fun. it wasn't terribly popular with the purists. But, yeah, you know, well, it, you know, the certain things, it, it was almost like he was doing three different films at once, and but certain things were genius. Having the newscaster as the chorus at the beginning is, that's what it would have been, you know? Uh, I don't see, if Shakespeare were walking around today, I don't see how he would have done that any differently. Yeah, I agree. So, that was, uh, there's some good stuff there. Definitely. Yeah, I think that it does, trying to interpret Shakespeare in the challenge because you know once again speaking Romeo and Juliet it's back on stage again uh, on Broadway with Orlando Bloom and Condola Rashad yeah um, though I want to say Orlando's well they're they're both not teenagers let's just put that way <laughs> yeah, he's 32 or something now I think yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, but I think <laughs> they showed while I was trying to find the uh, maximum Shakespeare thing from New York Times, I saw they had mentioned. I think he comes on stage in a motorcycle in that production. So that's definitely an interesting interpretation of <laughs> of that. <laughs> you can tell who their audience is. They're trying to get in there, though. Mm -hmm. At Orlando Bloom on a motorcycle. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, but and and uh, uh, the recent one, well, the recent film, very loose um, adaptation, more uh, a nod to it is that little zombie movie. Actually, Warm Bodies. Right. Yeah. Um, it was cute. They did some interesting things with it. I, it was. Um, I might show it to my students this year at the end of the year when we're done and let them have fun picking out. Oh, that's Nurse. That's her friend is the nurse. Oh, I get it. And her name is Julie. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not it's, it's not the Montagues and the Capulets. It's the living and the undead. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Sean, um, how has I know you uh, had an interesting transition, like you said this year. You're um, 
transitioned out of the theater classroom and doing a little bit more with technology and how's that transition been going and oh um, it's interesting it's been an interesting time for me because I'm I'm trying to I'm sort of transitioning completely out of the classroom into teacher training and things like that um, so but I've been doing it mentally for probably two or three years uh, <laughs> So I, it, it wasn't as painful last year to kind of leave the theater as, as it would have been had it been abrupt. Um, because I had been doing, for 17 years, I was a, you know, one-man theater department. And we went through a, a couple of years where we had two of us. But um, for the most part, you guys know what that's like. And, mm -hmm. and it's, you, you have dreams about what you're supposed to be doing at one in the morning, you know, because you didn't get it done when it was supposed to be done. And uh, you... There's there's a love hate relationship with that kind of thing, um, and uh, I do I miss it, but at the same time I, I don't miss it as much as I thought I would, um, because I'm really enjoying this time that we're in where communication is now a part of everything. You know, if you're going to write a paper, you're not going to do it by yourself anymore. Um, if you're going to put together any kind of proposal or presentation to somebody, you're going to have other people look at it. And, and helping people do that has really kind of feeds both my theatrical and my technology kind of needs mm -hmm. that I have. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the design of everything from sites to um, slides in a presentation to whatever, um, that feeds kind of the art. Uh, the artist in me, um, so I'm I'm really finding myself in this kind of cool place where I get to still do these things, um, only I'm not necessarily uh, running out of energy because I'm I'm going for my always in production. Hour, you know. Yeah, you know. Um, <clears throat> I, however, I still am not doing everything really well. I'm doing a bunch of things okay, um, and and would like to focus on one and do it amazing, but that's <sighs> n I don't think that's in my nature. Um, Mine either. I yeah. really <laughs> no, I think we are all kind of in that boat that we have so many interests in. Um, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's that's I, I get it. But um, but you know, I get to I still get to do a little bit at the college level, and I get to direct a show once a year. Um, so I get to tell my stories that way too. Um, but uh, I'm really, like, this help out thing is I, I actually enjoy just sitting there being available, waiting for somebody to come ask me a question. And, and um, it's, it's something new and exciting, a, a new and exciting way to help people do what they do. And uh, I really get a kick out of that. Well, um, I think we're in a very interesting situation. And... I think the world's coming to what theater teachers have been doing for years and years and years is yeah. that collaboration part. But yeah. now we can do it on a larger scale and help people do that through, you know, using the Google tools and all the other stuff that's out there. And I think that lends a... It's not new to us, just that whole working together and right. let's get this going and... Where do we need to be, and how we're going to get there, and what tools should we use? And you know, maybe sometimes it's what color to paint the scenery, or you know, what color are you going to make the site? It's it's still those artistic choices to make that happen. I think, and it's it's a big push of mine of something I as trying to find the time, but we as theater teachers have to step out and say. Hey, I know how to do this. Right. I've been doing this for years. Yeah. Oh, project-based learning. Yeah, been right. there, done that. Oh, exactly. I'm glad you're all here, and we have to one put a pause button for an hour to help our other teachers yeah. to do that. And that's I, it's such a, it's such the theater teacher's dilemma is always fighting the show, <laughs> or right. you know, finding finding the the time to do that balance, but I think we have to be advocates for ourselves, and we have to get ourselves out there, and sometimes we have to step out of that theater to help our other teachers and share our knowledge. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's pieces too about just the process. You know, people are discovering that failure is the way to learn, right? 
what do we do in rehearsal? You fail over and over again until you <laughs> find the right way to do it, you know? So it's, uh, we definitely have that. For, for the longest time, nobody cared about what we were doing. And now people are starting to see that, oh, wait, this, this whole process of, you know, working on a project and, and failing routinely as part of the process of growth um, is really, really imperative when we talk about learning. Uh, and it's, uh, it's wonderful for us, you know. I, I know you guys are just as excited now um, as you have been in your careers probably if you're like me. Um, and uh, it's a really cool time, scary time too, but a very cool time to be an educator. Well, usually if you're scared, you're moving in the right direction. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a theater thing to say. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, we're a particular kind of nerd, aren't we? Absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't trade us, though. Theater right. peeps are definitely my tribe. And the, and the Google teacher, um, Google certified teachers, it's the same kind of sense of um, I know. I, I'm push just buttons amazed. and see what happens as yeah. opposed yeah. to, what do I do? <laughs> just well, try let's... putting stuff, uh, stick the gel in and see what it looks like. <laughs> and then we're going to change it later as opposed to, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Comfortable with not knowing, I guess. Yeah. Where it is. Yeah, I've taken that jump so many times. It's okay. Here we go. We're gonna find out what happens. Don't know. <laughs> and and you learn valuable lessons like mm -hmm. don't spray acetone on styrofoam unless you have a mask on. <laughs> things like that. That's for you, Debbie English, if you're listening. <laughs> be careful, somebody's parent might be listening. Right? Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. No, it's no fun. Don't do it. <laughs> You've, you've read, right? You've heard about that. Oh, yeah. gosh, it was not good. Our poor tech director came running in. Oh, my gosh, you need these masks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would have been really smart if I hadn't done that. Oh, well. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, kids. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> I can't believe we've almost gone uh, a whole whole hour already. I, like I know. I should, a lot more. I talk too much. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, Sean, uh, if our listeners wanted to uh, find out more about you and all the cool things you're doing, what are some of the ways they can do that? Uh, the best way is to go to seanjoneal.com um, or tweet at me, Sean J S E A N J A Y. Uh, but uh, either one of those is, is pretty much, I'm there. You know, I got one of these darn phones that goes off every time somebody does anything to me. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm here whether I like it or not. <laughs> Connected. <laughs> and, and Danielle, how can our listeners find you on the interwebs? Uh, you can tweet me at Ms. Phyllis, M-S-S-I-L-A-S. Um, or you can go to my blog, edunerd.blogspot.com, and going there, there are a bazillion other ways you can find me, including my vanity Google Plus URL that I just got. I understand you got one, too. And I, yes, I did. Yeah, <laughs> pretty nice. Cool. Google Plus Danielle Silas. Love it. <laughs> and uh, listeners can follow me at, at edtech, the number four theater on Twitter or at tech4theater.com. Follow the blog, and I would like to encourage our listeners to, um, if to be or not to be was a little too much for you, um, <laughs> because, you know, I we want I want big, <laughs> the first one, let's tackle the hardest speech in English history. <laughs> uh, our next one, and I know a lot of people study this uh, during their classes, is Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, um, and if the whole thing's too much, just pick a couple of stanzas and uh, send it to worldtheatervideo.com and share that with us, because I'd love to double, triple, quadruple the participation that we have involved in that. Uh, I'd love to see where we can take it uh, within a month, and that's due uh, November 25th, if you can share the footage with me and then we'll create up a mashup video and um, 
and then also include everyone's um, individual performances and include that in the playlist for the second round of the World Theater Video Project. And uh, any other things we need to add before we sign out? No, I think I we're think good. I hope. Okay. <laughs> I think it was great to have you, Sean. Yes, thank you, Sean. We really appreciate you oh, taking hey, the time. This was um, a blast. You guys, it's <laughs> it's so hard to talk to you people. I don't understand, you know, this whole theater thing you got going on. But uh, no, thank you very much. For having us. Total, total you pleasure. might be meeting. You might be meeting some of my students on your on your help Yay. out, Sean. I'll they, take them. And I'll send them right to you, too. Oh, they don't want me. They have enough of me, that's for sure. <laughs> I encourage everyone to uh, check out this and other shows in edreach.us. Edreach and thanks again, and we'll see you next week.